living in a century home myself. And that century home's on Colburn Street. And as soon as you're on Colburn Street, there's an attitudinal difference. You could have a century home in the Dufferin area, and you could have a century home on Colburn Street. The values are completely different, even though I have a three-story home, and it's probably worth half of what a two-story home is in Dufferin. Because as the city developed, Dufferin was part of the immediate downtown. And so from that standpoint, the affluent lived close to the hub of the, of the city, which is the downtown. So I've always been interested both in, in the historical aspect and in uh, the relationship to downtown. I live next door to Echo Villa. And as a matter of fact, my property one time was the bowling greens for Echo Villa. Mm -hmm. And so the, the people would come and they, they would do lawn bowling uh, while they're waiting for the trains. And again, uh, all dressed in their, in their, in their big gowns and uh, their parasols and their frilly hats. On the, heading into Hamilton for the for the weekend because it was too long a trip, of course, to go for the day uh, in those days. When I bought my house uh, on Colburn Street, uh, I got almost two acres. So people say, oh, you live on the main street. Yeah, but I said, I live in the country out behind me. And I said, next door to Echo Villa, so I've got that historical element. My house uh, was an unusual house, and I had to completely fix it up when I bought it. It had been left. Renters had ruined it. And so I had to completely rebuild it. The newspaper heard about my rejuvenating the house, and so they came and did an article about it and, and did a lot of photographs and things. Um, I got more information from people phoning me after the fact, telling me stories about my house, because that was part of their history. What you're doing now is what, in fact, they did with me, was they phoned me to tell me their stories. One lady phoned me, and she says, Mr. Bradford, she says, I was in your house in 1913, and uh, she said, um, uh, I was there for a funeral. I said, oh, I said, that's interesting. She says, uh, the little Betsy had died, died from whatever they called the, the plague, whatever they called it back in those days. And um, uh, she was, they had her on display in the living room in this little four-foot casket. And she says, now I read the article about the fact that you said your house is made out of concrete. And it is. It's got an eight-inch concrete that goes right to the third floor, and then the bricks are on the outside. The um, lady says, um, you mentioned that there was a concrete box in the basement. I said, yes. I said, that was, that's kind of a, it's a bit of a story. We don't know what's in that box. It's made of concrete. It's four feet wide, two feet deep, two feet high. It's got a little hairline crack for the lid. She says, I think that's Bessie. Because she says, you know, they buried family on their own property mm -hmm. in those days. And uh, somebody else contacted me and said, you know what, the, 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 the family that owned that house, we know them to have been financial people where they helped other companies, they helped other individuals. They held mortgages for people. They helped people start businesses. So they had a lot of money. And yet after the, um, uh, the crash, the stock market crash in 1929, there was no sign of them. So they lost a lot of their money, but they could have put their money, their gold, in that box. I said, okay, that's really interesting. <laughs> and then um, uh, during the renovation, I had a fellow come in and do all the wiring, and he called me up. He says, yeah, I know the box. He says, I'm aware of that box. He says, in that box, he says, I don't know what's in it, but I can tell you, you have no drain in your basement because in those days they didn't they built it as solid concrete so no water could get yeah. in it was a tub and uh you have no drain you have uh three wells in your back property you have a cistern you have the internal cistern that goes from the third floor for the toilets you have um uh the uh, sewer system that goes out to the street for the city um that likely is a collection point for all the water that's where it's distributed for where the water comes and goes. That's likely because of its below ground level. I said, oh, great. So I did my own little research. What would, what would I do to follow up on this? If I open it up, <laughs> if it's water, I don't have a drain. Mm -hmm. I would fill my basement with water. That, that would be gross. a disaster, <laughs> absolute disaster. If it's the gold and money and the wealth of, of uh, the previous tenants I'm not telling anybody anyway yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's that's there that's a possibility um, or if it's little Bessie 
And if it's little Bessie, I made my inquiry to the cemetery commission through the city. And if it's little Bessie, and if Bessie's bones are there, I'm required to, to bury them. Mm-hmm. I'm not required to do ceremony, but I'm inquired, required to intern her bones. That's the law. If, however, there are any other set of bones, like her pet cat, it now becomes legally a cemetery, and they take control of my house. No way. And so I said, I'm not opening it. Yeah. Before I leave that house, I've, I did... You still put, haven't opened it yet? No, no, I have no... Wow. no. Before I leave that house, it will mm-hmm. be open. What I did do was I took a metal detector and discovered there's no rebar inside the concrete. Okay. So that tells me that was built prior to the, the era mm-hmm. of the rebar, which is, again, around the uh, mid-1900s, uh, 1910, 1920, in that area there. So I know it, it is consistent with the rest of the house. Um, I do have friends that have some of those little uh, cameras on, on uh, yeah. that you can shove in. So if I dig a hole drill a hole in and with it has a capability of putting light in and I can look around then I'll determine whether or not I can open it. The problem is if it is the plague, the bacteria is still alive. And so from that standpoint I could be it's risky sitting business. There. What do you think it is? From all the stories that you've heard, what well, do you think is the most probable? You know what, there's a certain sense of practicality with this this family. When they built this house, they built it to stay to, yeah. and and most houses back in those days were built with double brick and plaster and lathing mm-hmm. and this is a single brick eight inches of concrete and then plaster and lathing and so from that standpoint they had enough money to and enough foresight you could have an earthquake and that building won't even move yeah. let alone fall down if the entire house was was engulfed in flames it, the structure would still be that the roof would be gone, the floors would be gone, the interior contents would be gone, but the entire structure would still be there mm-hmm. in its entirety. It'd be holes where there are windows. You could rebuild it back to its same shape uh, in, instantly with, uh, or not instantly, but mm-hmm. relatively easily with the process. Um, I think it was built at a time when there was practicalities. The, at the, in the basement, there is a false floor in one section, and when you mo- remove the false floor, there's a tinned section, and that was with her butter keeper. And so with the butter keeper, it was below the ground level, which is b- below, uh, was below the floor, which is below ground level. And so the butter was always cold, but it wasn't so cold that it wasn't frozen, but it was protected, and because it was in tin, it was protected from the mice and the rats and whatever else could get into the house. Um, there was a coal chute where the coal came in, and there was, the, and there was this little butter keeper. They seem to build these practicalities in. It's over where we now have laundry sinks. And if they did laundry in the basement, then it was a place to put the clothes. It was a built-in concrete. Concrete would have cost nothing. Wood may have cost a little bit more, or the construction of wood, or a craftsman to do wood. But to pour a concrete thing, it could just easily be nothing more than a shelf. But that doesn't explain the, the, the little hairline crack four inches down from the top. 